much weather may be cloudy, but Mental Mars is dropping some freaking bombs! Hey there, Peter. Hi, Randy. So, are you excited for Pendles? Yes, I am. Pendles is going to cause quite a stir, I think. Uh, is it going to be the ultimate troll uh, character? <laughs> uh, well, I'll put, it, I'll put it this way. If you're already upset at D'Andy, Pendles is going to just go a lot further in that direction. Uh-oh. Uh, quite a while back, uh, when Oscar Mike's Helix first appeared, uh, there was someone on the forums who asked about uh, more uh, melee options for Oscar Mike because of his cloak. Is that something we're going to see with Pendles? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think you've gotten a chance to look at the Helix descriptions now, correct? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so uh, let me give you a, a, a quick walkthrough on Pendles just to kind of tell you what his, his gist is and then we can we can talk about specifics if you want and I can get into background and other stuff. But uh, in internally, you know, I always loved it with you. I, I've always talked about the code names for the characters and a lot of times those give away kind of the essence of the character we're trying to create like you remember uh, Galt was Papa Shotgun and, and I think you just called him that for a while until we re-released the name yeah Pendles is Corner Sneaker <laughs> uh, that's and uh, also the name of his uh, passive skill passive ability is Corner Sneak right yeah. So the, the first thing that you need to understand about Pendles is where while, while D'Andy and Oscar Mike and Shane and Orox, they're the three other characters right now that have a stealth component to their play. I mean, you could kind of have it with Kelvin when he turns into the little floaty ball, but not, not really. It, you know, the other three characters are stealth and D'Andy uh, with her, with her uh, hollow twin, you know, has a, has a big stealth element to her play. She sends out the decoy. She goes stealth, and you do a lot to get into position and do something clever. The best D'Andy players are all about, you know, then using that stealth to distract, so you can set up and get a big hit from the side or behind or, or whatever, and really do do damage. She gets bonus damage while she's attacking out of stealth. Pendles is again, like you said, with Oscar Mike. You know, is there a, a melee option on Oscar Mike? He's even further than either even we did in Oscar Mike or D'Andy. So the core deal about Pendles, the core thing that really makes his play style very, very, very different than other characters, is that corner sneak passive. The, the description is Pendles' cloak, which is the invisibility, his cloak activates when out of line of sight of enemies. Additionally, when, he, when he's cloaked, when he becomes invisible, his movement and in speed increases. So he is faster when he is stealth, which is inverse of what Oscar Mike and DeAndy. Oscar Mike and DeAndy, you can you can get some gear for Oscar Mike that helps with that. You can do some augs that helps with that. DeAndy is about even. But Pendles is actually pretty fast when he's stealthy. So a Pendles player is going to want to corner sneak. He's going to want to get out of line of sight. He's going to gonna get, or, or I think it even triggers now on, I think we had to make it trigger on a, uh, just a certain distance away from the character as well. But if you get out of a pretty good range of the character or go uh, go out of line of sight, he cloaks. Now, it's a similar type of cloak to how DeAndy and Oscar Mike work, right? So you can still kind of see them in the world. We call it the Predator cloak internally after the Predator movies. If you remember how the Predator, you can always yeah. see kind of the, the shimmer in the air, right? So you can still see him if you watch really, really close, but... I think you and I know that as much as going on visually in Battleborn, it's nearly impossible to see the, the you know Dandy or Oscar Mike or Shane when they're cloaked, yeah, you uh, unless you take special on. measures. Re yeah. So his core is all of his abilities are based on his ability to get invisible and stay invisible, and set up. He really is an assassin. In fact, his uh, his keywords are assassin, stealth, and complex. Uh, Pendles may be a little bit easier to pull off the stealth assassin because it's a lot easier to stealth. Now, Pendles is kind of that classic, almost RPG, D&D based rogue. He stealths and he backstabs for a ton of damage. So you sneak around, you set up a, a shot, and you do one big shot for a ton of damage. He also has some poison on him, so uh, he can do some dot damage. But he is all about uh, big damage or hit and run. Not too differently than D'Andy, but without quite the movement kit. So D'Andy's going to get a little bit more move and escape, 
Pendles is really going to be dependent on his stealth because when he is out of stealth, he's super slow. I, I want to say that he's almost Montana speed slow, but he is he's really, really, really slow. So when he is exposed, when he's out of stealth, he's very, very vulnerable. His skills then are all about uh, getting into stealth or uh, using those attacks out of stealth or the poison out of stealth for advantage. So his skill one is smoke bomb. Uh, he literally does, it is kind of the classic ninja smoke, uh, right? He throws a smoke bomb down. It does some damage and adds some poison to enemies around him, but it also instantly cloaks him. So if he's visible and you're on him and smoke bomb is ready to go, he can throw that down poison you, do a little damage that, that lingers for a second in the area, and it cloaks him so he can move around to another position. His other skill, Injection, is a big comma strike. His weapons are commas, by the way. He dual wields commas, and they're basically like some small handheld sickle or scythe or, or axe. They almost look like uh, mountain climbing spikes, if you've seen those. Uh, one of them is kind of a, a good standard sharp metal, and the other is actually a, a an adapted sharpened avian skull. He's got some backstory there that we'll we can you'll you'll see and talk into. But he has killed one of the the race of bird people in the past, uh, taken their skull and uses it as a weapon. I know exactly where I'm putting this rocket. When he uh, hit strikes with commas, it hits for, uh, like at, at the first time you get it at level one, it hits for 200 damage, which is a pretty vicious strike for a single strike, uh, and slows the enemy, which makes it harder to get away from him. So it opens up attack then for him just to come in with his dual commas and a flurry of strikes and, and hit them and follow up. So he wants to sneak up. Hit you with a big hit, slow, and when you notice he's there, smoke bomb out, get to another position, and strike again. His ultimate, Miasma, throws a huge area of poison around him for 10 seconds. It covers him, and while it's active, it cools down his injection, which is that big dual comma strike. So you're going to get a couple of those strikes in again really just coming in on a melee flurry of attacks with a couple of really big bursty damage attacks. Uh, while poisoning and then being ready to smoke bomb out if you get in trouble. Now to counter all of that, Pendles is, again, he's very slow when he's out of stealth and he also doesn't have uh, quite as much health and, and shield as other characters. He's a little bit of a, again, what we call a glass cannon. He's not going to have the survivability that some of the other characters do. So you really want to be sure if you use Pendles well that you're, you're making the most out of stealth. Now, before I go into the Helix, do you have any, any questions or anything you want me to answer in that? Uh, about the uh, second comma, did uh, Pendles kill Benedict's brother? That's a great question. Uh, no, not his brother, but someone else who is significant in Benedict's <laughs> life. And uh, that's all I'll say for now. That's actually part of the lore you unlock on Pendles. And it's a very significant moment in Pendle's career, as well as it is um, for for. And yes, there is a there is an interaction with Benedict. They've had a they've crossed paths in there, and so you'll hear there is you'll some hear them chatter. have. <clears throat> yeah, there's yeah. some battle chatter where you'll hear them recognize and spot and, and each other. And there's there's a little bit of an enmity there, you know. Benedict, as much as a jerk as he is, um, is, is still a peacekeeper. He's still kind of a a good guy. He's a soldier, and he's he's fighting for good causes. Pendles is a paid assassin. He's a he's a killer. He's a murderer. That's what what kind of slips him naturally in with the robes and, and makes him a good fit there. Just to cover a little bit of lore, the you know while we're talking about characters that Pendles crosses over with, the other character that's going to have a lot of kind of interaction with Pendles is Alani. They actually come from the same planet, Akapos. Uh, it was a remember a mostly water-covered planet for years and years and years. That if you followed Alani's backstory, uh, was actually uh, scorched by the Generate who came in and uh, uh, killed most of the people on the planet, and then drained the water before it was veiled for survival. It's one of the grudges that Alani has with uh, the Generate, especially Ambra, over an incident where where Ambra had led one of the expedition ships into. Uh, steal the planet's water. Pendles had left the planet before that uh, that incident happened, but he he was born there. His people called the Roa uh, grew up there. The kind of the snake-like people. 
And they actually are a, a phase of people who go through several stages of evolution. Again, there's some lore you can unlock on that, but they start off kind of more on four legs, almost like a salamander. And over the phase of their life, they evolve, you know, other legs, so they they become bipedal, and even further than that. So uh, I'll let I'll let the people who really want to dive into that. There's a little tease there, and you can you can dig in further. But Pendles uh, and Benedict and Pendles and Alani are definitely going to have some bad blood between them, and you'll get to hear more about that. Of course, he's uh, he's sided in with the Rogue, so he's familiar with Reyna and Toby and and those guys that hangs out. So you'll hear a little bit of familiarity from them. And even some things uh, a little bit down the line, Pendles, who's releasing soon, uh, I'll, I'll, just a short tease from you, is actually going to be a, a, appear as a secondary character in one of our future Operation missions, which we'll talk a little bit more about how Pendles works and, and who he is. So uh, that's some cool stuff in a few months to come. So there's a little tease for you, too, that this is exclusive for you, Peter. Yay! <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Um, All right. Pendle's uh, secondary attack, is that something like uh, the Andes secondary attack, the throwing star? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, his secondary is is throwing stars. It doesn't curve quite as much. It's somewhere between Deande and Miko. Again, it's, you know, it's really great for an assassin type character, especially who has slow movement speed, to have something that can do just a little bit of damage as characters go away. So it's not going to do an immense amount of damage, but you'll be able to ping people with those throwing stars and get those little pokes here and there, either to harass someone, you know, and keep their shields from recharging, or to hunt them down when they have just a sliver of, of life left. So. Uh, I imagine that you're going to see Pendles in, in one of two big roles, either kind of as a fight initiator, where you jump in and he does a ton of damage, or as kind of a closer, where he, like you see Deandy kind of do the same thing, where he kind of hovers around the battle, waits for someone to get low, and then absolutely destroys someone as they're running back from the combat areas. There are a number of characters in the game right now that have abilities that expose stealth characters. Like if you paid attention to Arendi, uh, she's always had uh, an ability to take a helix option that adds exposure to stealth on her Shadowfire Pillar ability. And we just buffed that up in this last big patch. Now when she uses Shadowfire Pillars, it exposes stealth enemies all around her, not just the pillar. And is a lot easier to show that. So I think you're going to see those activities. Uh, Ombra has one. Uh, and there are a few other characters that have the abilities to expose stealth. I think those are going to become really, really, really important. I think people are going to want to watch their games and, and watch as Pendles lands on the roster a little bit more to start paying attention and taking those abilities because when they use those abilities on Pendles, you don't just see his outline, you actually negate all of his stealth effects. So you'll slow him down, you'll expose him, you'll have him there. And especially if you're, you're in a fight and you're worried about him like re-stealthing and coming back, those abilities to keep him exposed and keep him out are, are going to be really, really important to staying on top of him and being sure he doesn't get a chance to get around. Yeah. Um, All right. So you mentioned Orendi. Is he uh, going to be the uh, uh, the counter character uh, for Pendles? I think Orendi certainly helps. I think Cleese can potentially play in a way that's going to make Pendles very hard to get in there. Cleese, especially if he starts chaining together rifts, he can easily absorb the first two comma hits from Pendles, and um, he can just stay in an area and you know taser Pendles automatically whenever he comes in range. Um, so he's going to create a very hard uh, 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 character for. It's maybe not a hard counter for Pendles, but it'll be very hard for Pendles to de defeat Cleese. So Cleese, I think, is going to become a good choice if you if you're in a Pendles match. Arendi has has some. I think the problem with Arendi is while she exposed him, you know, it, he's kind of a small, snaky character. So, again, if you're having uh, trouble with Arendi landing the pillars or hitting those those big shots, I think it's going to be hard. Probably mobility characters are going to be good on counters. Like I imagine Melka is going to be a really good counter for Pendles because again, he's got to be able to get to you and ideally, you know, get right up in melee range and do a strike. So characters that bounce and move and jump around a lot are going to be very hard for Pendles to catch because while he has a little bit of mobility, he doesn't have a huge amount of mobility. You know, he's not going to be a Melka. He's not going to be a, not even a Wrath, you know, as far as sure speed and Wrath double jump or Thorn uh, with the high jumps. So those characters, especially characters like that that have some AOE, Wrath will probably be pretty good. 
I believe CC's knocked Pendle out of his stealth, so if Wrath hits him with a knock-up on a, a catalytic smash, then you'll you'll be able to get him out of stealth and, and see him. So there are a lot of characters like that that will give him a hard time. So I, I think Pendle's similar to the way you see Dandy now. is going to be one of those really polarized characters, right? The, the players that are very, very good at him will be absolutely stunningly frightening. They will get high kills in the match. You will never see them coming, and you'll be dead. Uh, but I think he's going to be a hard character. That's why we gave him a complex rating. He's going to be a hard character for a lot of people to pick up. So uh, I, I think that's really great for character number 27. And I think adding a character that has a little bit more finesse and challenge is going to be really good and really important, especially one that can do some things the other can't. Uh, his stealth is, is super awesome. Uh, you want to talk about his helix a little bit? Uh, yes, yeah, sure. you also mentioned uh, the CC and that is one of uh, Pendle's uh, talents, uh, of his talent, uh, that he has uh, reduced uh, CC. Uh. Yeah, and, and when we get in, you go into the helix, you'll see a couple of helix options that can even take that further. Uh, it makes it a lot harder to slow or to blind or knock up. Now, they'll, they'll all affect him. But what we wanted to do is not to absolutely completely shut that down. If you're if you're playing a hard a hard CC team like a you know a Wrath and a Galilea and a Boulder, uh, maybe a few like that, you'll want to look at, at, at probably diving even further into, into crowd control reduction just to keep yourself from being continually knocked out of stealth and staying out of that. You want to you want to get back into stealth as quickly as possible and and move into that. So. If you look at his helix, you'll see again the kind of the left area, the right area, the left being height and senses, and right being trained assassin. Uh, generally, if you look at the types of things you get on the left, you, it's going to be all about kind of increasing his survivability. It adds a little bit of CC. He actually gets a blind. Uh, he gets a couple of abilities uh, that can give him lifesteal, so added to his survivability and combat as he's hitting with his commas. And then some uh, some other general uh, damage reduction, uh, some escape. It increases the height of his jump. Smoke bomb propels him backwards. You can get smoke bomb more often. You really see that idea about uh, getting Pendles in there and getting him out of fight or giving him sort of survivability to get away from it. If you go more on the right side on trained assassin, it really is about turning him into a single target murderous assassin. You know, you're going to see uh, a little dash like you can do. See, by default, his injection, his strike, doesn't dash him forward like DeAndy's does. I think DeAndy's even right out of the gate. He has to actually make a decision to add a dash to his injection, which, uh, you know, also uh, dec means he's not taking an increased duration in the smoke bomb. So he's giving up some AOE damage for the ability to lurch forward and single strike a target. On down with the with the trained assassin helix, you'll see a lot more of things that really then just you'll see damage stacks. You'll see more damage over time. You're going to see uh, a decreased cooldown on the the smoke bomb to get him back in that. You're going to see a couple of abilities at helix rank three, uh, and then again at helix rank six. That's backstab and sweet spot. That each of those increase his damage from behind by 25 percent. So that means you're going to get I forget what the math is, but it's like a uh, a overall like a 60 some odd percent increase to damage if he's hitting from behind a character. I think trained assassin becomes a really great tree if you're having problem with big tanky characters like Isaac or Montana, even Cleese if you want to try to take him down. Atticus if you can get behind him. Characters that are a little bit easier to get behind and, and leverage up, but it'll give you that huge first hit, really let you dig in that damage with him. Anyway, uh, it, it, you'll, you'll see that, that everything else on the trained assassin side kind of stays that. I think there are a lot of builds that will be interesting to mix and match with people, but I'll, uh, I'll be interested to see where, where people go. I, I think Pendle Helix has a lot of really great adaptability that plays, that you can choose different things as you progress in the match. And I think uh, if we've done Pendles right, there's hopefully not, you know, and it's ideally not with any character, but Pendles especially, there's not one build that's great on him. That he's actually really good at several different things and he can adapt to a lot of different challenges as the fight moves on. So it's a level one uh, right skill, Cobra Strike. Is that a G.I. Joe reference? <laughs> you know, um, it might be. 
uh, there's there's a lot of nod and Battleborn to kind of classic 80s cartoons, especially G.I. Joe. A lot of the Peacekeepers art set, when you go to see the Peacekeepers bases on Bliss, look very much like a lot of our the bases of G.I. Joe cartoons, the toys that we did. So, yeah, there's probably a little G.I. Joe flavor in that. What would your uh, Helix look like, if you could pick one? Oh, man. Um... For for me, it, it's going to depend. Again, I, I usually go, I'm not a great accuracy player. My Twitch skills are not nearly as good as other people. Uh, I'm definitely a positional player. So I really like taking the life steal over the bonus damage because I'm going to need to hit you a few times and I want a little survivability. So what I would probably do is take the abilities that add life steal on that and then I would take several of the abilities that like reduces like escape plan on the right side of Helix 5. When you're uncloaked and taking damage, it reduces your smoke bomb cooldown up to 100%. So if you're taking a lot of damage when you have escape plan, it's going to let you get that smoke bomb, right, which recloaks you, gets you invisible again, and lets you go back and kind of get the stealth and run away. So again, for me, a little I'll, I'll emphasize survivability and escapability over raw damage. Uh, but bolder players may, not bolder as in the dwarf, but characters, players who are more bold uh, with their assassin play style, I could totally see them really just hugging that trained assassin side, the right side over there, and going damage. But I, I usually do a mix. Yeah, going off with my uh, RAF skills, I would also probably pick some uh, lifesteal. I go down real fast uh, playing uh, as him. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I always take um, the skill lifesteal on Wrath because I love the um, using the cross blades and getting the big skill lifesteal on that. It's a big surge of health rather than a little ticky health. I usually find it makes a bigger difference in combat. So Pendles actually is one of the few non-generic characters with lifesteal. There aren't a lot of other characters that can do that. So I think he's going to add in that mix and that play in there. Great. I got a feeling that uh, little... The level 9 Helix, uh, Relentless Strikes and Slippery. Um, I feel the, 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 the Relentless Strikes is more an assass trained assassin uh, skill, but that could just be me. The other one is uh, plus 50% CC reduction. Well, lo look at it again. On, heightened, on Relentless Strikes, you have to be hitting with melee strikes to get that injection cooldown. Yeah. So again, it's think of it more like uh, like Wolverine the X-Man. He needs to be hitting a lot. He needs to be more of a brawler. He's going to need some survivability on that side to really get the injection of that. So he's going to be, if you build yeah. lifesteal and build that and build a little bit tankier with him on that, you'll be able to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with characters a little bit longer and use ejection a couple of times for being a little bit tankier. Whereas on the right, trained assassin, the slippery, again, gives him a chance to get out of CC, get away from there, get stealth, and set up that positional backstab to take down an enemy again. So you're right, though. There, there's a little bit of mix and match, and you might find that if you, if you really... I can totally see a build where people are doing the backstab thing, and they're doing backstab and kind of a flurry of blows just to get that injection to pop again and are really trying to hit that again. So almost like, you know, a Rindy's burst of taking, you know, the, the shadow fire pillar that can get cooldown reduction and the nullify that can cool down shadow fire. And if you take cooldown gear on top of that, you know, a Rindy can by level at nine or 10, she's just spamming shadow fire pillars. And in a lot of ways, I think you're gonna see Pendles be kind of the melee version of that, spamming that that injection over and over again to get it on, on the, the characters, so. The level 10 helix. Uh, no. Necrosis? Necrosis. It has the, the new wound CC. Yes. I saw something on the forums that uh, you guys are looking into making that more useful uh, for the PvE side of the game. We would love to. Um, we're looking for opportunities to do that. The problem is when we start doing big swath of PvE, we have to update all of the maps which create ginormous updates. So. We have to be really careful and cautious about when we update things and when we bring those concepts in. It does do some things on on NPCs, but doesn't uh, since NPCs don't often heal each other. There are cases where it does. Sorry, only a couple of cases where it does that. It's not going to be as useful there. Um, 
but that venom synergy again you're you're making him a hunter of, of enemies that have less than 50 percent health um that's probably the smarter the smarter uh choice to take if you're playing story missions it turns him into uh, yeah. again a boss killer you know you get behind big bosses you start to do that you're really going to see the advantage of some of those damage stacking type of things you're going to see his positional play and by the way you're talking about abilities useful in in story missions um i don't know how much you played campaign with uh, oscar mike or deandy to see how enemies react to their stealth but yeah. it actually removes you from targeting for most enemies when you stealth yeah so pendles is probably going to be a really interesting really fun solo play campaign uh where you can go through and pretty much murder everything but you have to you know find a target wait for them to move away from a pack pick them off kill them quickly recloak move to another position you know i know a lot of people that really like that kind of thief assassin type of gameplay so uh they should they should really enjoy him in campaign he's very very powerful in story missions that's that's gonna be interesting yeah yeah, I played a lot of uh, Oscar Mike, and yeah, the uh, stealth generator is uh, <laughs> yeah a bit of a panic button uh, sometimes. Uh, I think we covered most of Pendles, I think. Yeah, there's gonna be. I, I think we're doing another um, uh, live stream uh, right before he comes out because the live stream is gonna be actually with uh, I think Ben Gettleman, the designer, character designer who worked on Pendles. Uh, and he'll go into a lot of depth about what's going on and how the numbers work and all of that. So the live stream will will show Pindles being played in matches and we'll, uh, we'll walk through in detail with the designer. Then we have something to look forward to. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, Randy, I would like to thank you uh, for this, uh, uh, yeah, this talk, this interview. It's almost... Uh, Four o'clock in the morning here in Holland. You should my probably get some sleep. <laughs> yeah, my <laughs> my son is going to uh, start uh, jumping on my bed in like three hours. Uh, <laughs> yeah, my pleasure, and I'll I'll always make an exception for you, Peter. It's, it's always my pleasure to talk with you. Thank you. Uh, bye bye. Bye, Peter. Dear other team, I've watched all of Mental Mars's videos. Now I could kick your asses even harder. X O X O, Oscar Mike.